Welcome to Nuked Radio. This is episode 43. Today is Tuesday, June 26th, 2012. I'm your host, Christina Consolo, but I'm actually on vacation this week with Jules. In the meantime, though, I wanted to share a couple of stories because I was getting emailed like crazy right before I left about Reactor 4 and its appearance on the JNN cameras, and it was fairly obvious that there was a good chunk of it missing. I know right after the typhoon moved through Japan, there was quite a bit of activity on the cranes, more than I've seen in a long time. Turns out that there was some controlled demolition going on. However, in the last few days, there's been a few stories that have come out that I want to make sure I share with you guys. This was reported on Any News June 24th. Fukushima plant workers keep saying to us it could go any minute kind of thing. This was from a teacher being interviewed in March of 2012. Even now, people say to always have your stuff ready to go. That's not the only article that's come out about Reactor 4. Japan TV is reporting tilted walls found at Fukushima No. 4 reactor. Further investigation found damage in various parts of the structure's west and south side. That was published June 25th, also published June 25th, and reported on Fukushima Diary as well. Maximum bulge in No. 4 reactor building 40% larger than previously stated in TEPCO data. Published June 25th, again, Japan nuclear expert, I'm so worried, I can't believe No. 4 spent fuel pool will withstand the next big quake. Luckily, there hasn't been anything big there recently. And the good news is, and I like to remind people, that it hasn't fallen yet, although it does appear that there may be some changes happening in the building besides the demolition in the light of that report. Fukushima worker is shocked. Steel support frames under Reactor 4 is damaged. The reinforcement of the pool is jury-rigged. Danger of hit by typhoon or tornado. Vast amounts of heavy water inside. Mark Willacy from ABC Australia reports, this gentleman that he interviewed said working next to the Reactor 4 building, he was shocked about what he was told about the pool 30 meters above him. The guy's name is Tomohiko Suzuki, I spoke to a worker that helped reinforce the Reactor 4 building. He said the spent fuel pool has vast amount of heavy water in it and that the steel support frames were damaged, but he told me the reinforcement in the pool was so jury-rigged if a typhoon or tornado hits, it will be dangerous. And here is a portion of that interview. Possibly, but few here actually realize that a few kilometers to the east is the spent fuel pool at the Fukushima nuclear plant containing enough nuclear fuel to spawn a catastrophe to dwarf Chernobyl. In the gloom of this pool, a 1,331 highly radioactive spent nuclear fuel assemblies, each containing dozens of rods. It's also clear from this footage that the pool is littered with debris from last year's disaster. Roshini. The nuclear fuel in that pool is two and a half times what's needed in a reactor core. It contains 5,000 times more cesium than was released by the Hiroshima bomb, and the pool is just hanging there. We don't know when it could collapse. This is where the pool sits, five storeys above the ground next to the reactor. That is how things are supposed to look. This is how the reactor building looks now, after a hydrogen explosion blew it apart. The blast tore off the roof and caused a reinforced wall of the fuel pool to bulge by up to three and a half centimetres. As for the hundreds of tonnes of spent fuel, until this month, its only protection from the elements was a white plastic sheet. Some nuclear experts warn Japan is literally playing with fire. If there's a crack in the pool and the water drains out, the fuel rods will be exposed. It will then be impossible to cool the fuel. So if an accident happens, ten times more cesium than has already been released by the Fukushima meltdowns will go into the atmosphere. Depending on which way the wind is blowing, Tokyo could become uninhabitable. Hiroaki Koide is a senior nuclear reactor engineer at Japan's prestigious Kyoto University and one of the experts raising the alarm. As soon as possible, those fuel rods should be removed. Earthquakes are striking almost every day around the Fukushima plant, so I'm praying that a big one won't hit. 
This warning is echoed by international nuclear safety experts, among them Robert Alvarez, a former advisor to the US Secretary of Energy. You have a very, very large concentration of radioactivity where the only thing that keeps that radioactivity from being released through a catastrophic fire is a pool of water. That pool is 100 feet off the ground in a structurally damaged building in a high-risk earthquake zone. I mean, what more can you be worried about? But the operator of Fukushima, TEPCO, brushes all this aside, arguing that despite being open to the elements and in a damaged building 30 metres above the ground, the pool is safe. We checked its condition the other day, and although there is a bulge in one wall, we don't think this will have any effect on the soundness of the pool or the building. We believe both can withstand a large earthquake. And on the matter of removing the fuel rods, TEPCO appears in no great hurry. The original method was to take out the spent fuel by a crane attached to the ceiling of the building, but that's been damaged, so we're thinking of installing a crane for this. We would like to start removing the fuel sometime next year. They have to have a heavy overhead crane. They're going to have to uh, manipulate the spent fuel underwater constantly, put it into containers that are very heavy, involving uh, perhaps uh, uh, containers that may weigh as much as 100 tons. Uh, this requires extraordinary precautions, even under a routine basis. So given the, the, the magnitude of the damage, that sort of ups the stakes quite a bit in terms of, of the capability to safely remove this material. Ever since the meltdowns, TEPCO has maintained a veil of secrecy over what's happening at Fukushima. But one man has managed to penetrate it. Tomohiko Suzuki is a rarity in Japanese journalism, a reporter prepared to put his health on the line to get to the truth. When I went undercover as a worker at the Fukushima plant, I wore protection gear. But over my sleeve I wore this watch, which has a secret camera inside. With his secret camera watch and other hidden devices, Suzuki recorded life inside the Fukushima plant. Working next to the Reactor 4 building, he was shocked by what he was told about the fuel pool 30 metres above him. I spoke to a worker who helped reinforce the Reactor 4 building. He said the spent fuel pool has vast amounts of heavy water in it and that the steel support frames were damaged. But he told me that the reinforcement of the pool was jerry-rigged. So if a typhoon or a tornado hits, it will be dangerous. Sound far-fetched? Well, just last month, a neighbouring prefecture to Fukushima was smashed by the most violent tornadoes recorded in Japanese history. I call it the sickness of Japan. First we hide, then we postpone, and then we assume no responsibility. Mitsuhei Murata is a former Japanese ambassador to Switzerland. He's brought his fears about the fuel pool to the attention of the United Nations Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon. TEPCO and the government of Japan not only lacks the ability, but the intention. So in your opinion, if there was a problem with that fuel pool, it would be the end of Japan? Yes, and there is no one who denies that. We cannot sleep peacefully. So who should the people of Fukushima back? A collection of nuclear experts, journalists and concerned activists struggling to be heard? Or TEPCO with its history of cover-ups and incompetence? I do not believe TEPCO. I do not feel safe at all. Radiation levels are still high. TEPCO says the fuel pool can withstand the next big earthquake. But I can't believe this. That's why I'm so worried. Nothing like this has ever happened before. And we are sort of charting unknown waters here. And uh, this is a problem that if such an event were to occur, it would be of an international dimension. There's a lot of variables to this equation. And not only about Reactor 4, what about some other things going on and driving a 
across the upper Midwest and into New England, I did see some military movement, which is a bit concerning. What are the camps for? What are the bunkers for? Could they be for reactor four? Or something else? One thing I know is going to happen is an economic collapse. And I've been on Wide Awake News with Charlie McGrath multiple times. We're going to play a portion of the interview that I did with him on June the 12th. This was right after the tuna fish reports came out. And he goes off on a rant in the beginning, which I'm leaving in this interview because it's awesome. Charlie is known for his epic rants. This one came on the heels of the report about Rand Paul supporting Mitt Romney and not his father. Ron Paul was Charlie's guy. He was probably the most promising candidate for a lot of us. But regardless of your political feelings, there are some very concerning things going on in the global economy. Just in the last week, just in the last few days, Scotland is now in the midst of a collapse. Their banks are limiting withdrawals. People can't even get into their accounts and find out how much money they have. Last week it was Spain. It's happening fast. And I came across an article that I'm going to share too after the interview about internment and resettlement operations. And this is from an army guide that was published in 2010. And I'll tell you how to find that also. But right now we're going to play the interview with Charlie. Charlie has a show on the Rents radio network called Wide Awake News. Check him out. And we're going to uh, get him on a future show, too, to uh, cover some of these things from a global financial perspective. Even though we don't cover that on a normal basis, it's important enough to the people that are listening to this show to know about some of the other things that are going on. If you're awake to Fukushima, you're waking up to a lot of other things, too. So enjoy the interview. All right, guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. I am your host, Charlie McGrath. It is the 12th day of June, Tuesday. I'd like to welcome the 90-ish people we have in the chat room. Uh, come on in there. We're going to have Christina Consalo, a.k.a. the Rad Chick, uh, come on here in just a minute and talk about what's going on in Indiana, what's going on with Fukushima, what's going on with the tuna in the, in the ocean, what's going on with the uh, destruction of our environment, and how these uh, are being spread into in all kinds of different stories coming up, all kinds of different directions. So she actually took the time out and went and did some investigation uh, for her program and fortunately for us, for uh, our program tonight as well. Okay, I want to I want to cover a little bit of what we talked, what I talked about in a video last night because I, I, I got some people uh, kind of irate. And I want to address this mainly because some of the people I made irate are – people that I consider to be long-term friends of the YouTube channel, long-term friends of this program. And I want to kind of not only clarify, but spell this case out in a little bit longer than a three-minute um, video. Now, I put out a video last night called To the Gates of Hell. And the whole p purpose of this video was to show what's happening to this so-called Liberty movement, which showing show what happened uh, to show what's happened since 2007, and it doesn't matter if it's a Liberty movement or a Tea Party movement or an Occupy movement. We've seen every uh, civil pushback. We've seen every protest. We've seen every concern get a little bit of lip service, only to be folded in to the mix, folded in to the status quo, folded in to the, the political agenda. Now, there is one group that I thought, one individual, one, one camp that I thought this would never be the case, that this would never take place. I, I thought, without a doubt, this energy that began for Mon Paul over 30 years ago, this liberty movement, this return to sound money, this return... Uh, to a constitutional republic auditing and eventually getting rid of the Federal Reserve, in, ending of illegal wars, bringing home our troops, I, 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 under no illusion that it was going to be successful in the year 20, 2012. 
No, no illusion whatsoever. I was hopeful. I was hopeful that we'd see this mass awakening and people realizing that there was somebody out there championing liberty, championing freedom, championing the Constitution, championing an end to the corruption that has led us to where we're at right now. And a lot of people called me out because I said in this video, shame on you, Ron Paul, shame on you, Rand Paul, shame on you, you know, fill in the blank of the icons that have popped up uh, in in uh, more recent history, Glenn Beck, Sarah Palin, these these folks who have grabbed onto this energy, used it to uh, advance themselves and then were, you know, let it, uh, let it do what the, their intention was, which was let it be filtered into one uh, side of the blue team or the red team. And that's exactly what happened with the Tea Party. It's now in the far right wing of the lunatic fringe of the Tea Party. Like it or not, I marched with the guys in the Tea Party as well as a lot of you listening to me right now did. Like it or not, that's where it's at. You say Tea Party, you get uh, you get a an automatic impression because of the mainstream media that these are a bunch of uh, nuts. Well, guess what? When Rand Paul went on Hannity and he took the momentum that his father had established and earned and generated. When he took this same revolution, this same return to freedom and liberty, and he used this momentum to become senator in 2010 in Kentucky, this was the Ron Paul revolution. The revolution put Rand Paul into office. The ideals of this revolution put Rand Paul into office. Now, you literally need to understand that there's no conceivable way, no way whatsoever, no matter how you want to rationalize it, that this can't be happening, that this icon uh, didn't know what his son was doing. That is delusional. That is delusional. It is crystal clear what's going on. Ron Paul is some, what, 80 years old. This is his last go at it. Ron Paul developed this momentum and energy behind his revolution, his uh, campaign for liberty. It's now being handed off to Rand Paul. This momentum, this charisma being handed off to Rand Paul. And what Rand Paul did with it, and it has to be uh, with his father's, if not direct permission, then with his understanding, was he capitulated. He capitulated on the Hannity program. He had a nice half-hour meeting with Mitt Romney. And Mitt Romney has some of the same goals that the Paul Camp, air quote, has. Auditing the Fed. Limiting the power of government. These are the things that he's told Hannity why he, of course, naturally would support his father. But since his father admitted a few days earlier that there was no way he was going to be the GOP nominee, and there obviously no way he was going to run as third-party candidate, it set the stage for Rand to come out and endorse Mitt Romney after, of course, a 30-minute meeting where they could align their differences, apparently. He goes on in an article to say that Mitt Romney shares a lot of the same goals when it comes to auditing the Federal Reserve, taking back some of this power. This is a fraction. This is a minute fraction of what this revolution is about. Yes, the Federal Reserve needs to be audited. Yes, I believe the Federal Reserve needs to be held accountable, and the central banking cabal controlling this planet needs to be uh, reined in and then eliminated, period. But Mitt Romney is a war-loving neocon. Mitt Romney has his ties with Wall Street deep and long. They're not going away. Mitt Romney is everything that the Bilderbergs want. That's why he was there. He's everything that Goldman Sachs wants. That's why he is funded to the hilt by Goldman Sachs. Mitt Romney is the poster board boy for the red team, the GOP. He will be their nominee for president, and uh, there's a, a strong likelihood that he will be the next president. Now, it is, again, unconceivable to believe that Rand Paul did not know everything that I just said there, that he stands, he's paying lip service in a 30-minute meeting to auditing the Fed, gaining control over the Fed, maybe eliminating the Fed. That 30-minute meeting is meaningless. It's meaningless without everything else that goes with it, a return to a constitutional republic, 
a, a, a perp walk for the people who've destroyed the economy, not only the United States of America, but the world, the world economy. People are dying in the Middle East and North Africa right now as a result of economic activity launched by a central banking cabal, period. A plac placating to Rand Paul for 30 minutes about the Federal Reserve is a joke, and it's an insult. And anybody who supported Ron Paul should be insulted, not only by Rand Paul's words, but by Ron Paul uh, uh, allowing his son to go forth and do this. I believe it is complete and total betrayal of the uh, campaign for liberty and everything Ron Paul stood for and stands for. Mitt Romney has no intentions of stopping wars. Mitt Romney has no intentions of stopping the collusion between Washington and Wall Street. That's not going to happen. We're going to get Obama again. We're going to get Bush again. We're going to get Clinton again. There's nothing going to change with out-of-control government. There's nothing going to change with trillion dollars a year deficit spending in order to save these firms on Wall Street who are raping in profits, literally raping this planet, both uh, uh, naturally and through war in expanding this empire America. Nothing is going to stop with Mitt Romney. It's going to get worse. And then the next Democrat, the blue team after that, isn't going to stop. We're not going to see a suspension of the TSA. We're not going to see the reduction of the security industrial complex. We're not going to see a reduction of the military. We're not going to see this with a 30-minute meeting where they pay lip service to the Federal Reserve. And we're not going to see this by gaining a half-inch plank in the platform of the GOP. It is not going to happen. You have been duped and deceived. And, oh, yeah, by the way, Mitt Romney's own words our Ben Bernanke is doing a fine job several months ago talking about, do we need to audit the Fed? This is when Uncle Paul was still a lunatic before the momentum was building behind him for this 2012 uh, campaign, and the GOP considered him nothing but a nut. Of course Mitt Romney played the card that the uh, handlers told him to play, which is we need to be uh, hands off of the Federal Reserve. We can't touch their uh, their power, because if we do, then politics gets involved. It is all a big pile of crap. That is it. Rand Paul sold the revolution out. Period. Period. There is nothing else to add to that. Ron Paul's legacy of voting constitutionally, being a champion statesman for the Constitution, will be destroyed because of the acts of what Ron Paul has done backing Mitt Romney for whatever token he's going to get, be it a speech on the floor of the convention, be it a post in the White House, be it whatever. All of that work, 30 years, if it was from his heart, and I believe it was and is, will be eliminated because of one thing, capitulation. I am terribly sorry if I offended anybody with this rant or with last night's video, but it is time to wake up and realize the truth that the revolution cannot live in a person, in a figurehead, in an icon, in a superhero. They don't exist. They can be got to. They can be made to do either themselves or through their family or their uh, surrogates the will of the status quo, of the establishment, of the power elite. You must be the revolution. You. We must stand united and fall divided, period. The ideals of the Tea Party. The ideals of the Occupy movement, the ideals of the Campaign for Liberty, they are not dead just because icons are put before TV and capitulate or just because propaganda uh, is put before on something like the Occupy movement and renders it null and void because of propaganda. We must be the revolution. We must understand what is happening in our names. And when we betray, when we see somebody step out of line, we let them fall separately. We stand united. We, and divided we fall. We must. We will have our principles drug out of us. Drug out of us, one at a time. It isn't going to be an individual. It is going to be everybody together, and this is what we need to realize. Be offended, but don't be offended at me. Be offended at a system 
that has taken an icon and corrupted it to the point that it was used as nothing more than a relief valve. And at this time in 2010, or I mean at this time in 2014, uh, uh, when we have midterm election, and when you hear Ron Paul supporters and you realize that that has been changed into nothing more than the far, far right wing of the Republican Party, then you will understand that this takeover was complete, intentional, and this uh, pressure relief valve was uh, lit off at just the right moment before the 2012 campaign. This is the reality of what's happening right now. You are the revolution. You must stand up. You must investigate all information you hear for yourself, develop your own opinion, and let, let nobody sway you from that. No icon in alternative media, in mainstream media, in the political uh, strata, in the financial elite circles, nobody can take what you have learned and uh, and taught yourself, which is you will be the one that's informed. You will set your own principles, and nobody else is going to be able to come and deflate that with a pressure relief valve. This is the reason why I will continue with Warren on these axioms. This is the reason why I will continue to talk about the uh, uh, the corruption between the political elite and the financial elite and how it is now even taken something like this campaign for liberty and turn it into a joke, a pun. Nothing more than a Tea Party movement, guys. Nothing more than a Tea Party movement. Nothing more than an Occupy movement. And if you think it's going to revive itself and Ron Paul's going to come out and say, you know what, this was wrong, forget about it. It is done. It is calculated. It was calculated in advance. It is happened, and it is going to remain uh, to be nothing more than a pun going into the future. The revolution needs to occur, and it needs to happen with every single individual hearing my voice right now or every single person in this chat room or every single person that you can affect. Liberty must be taken back. It isn't going to be handed out by some superhero pop culture role model. Wow, 22 minutes. All right, Christina Mollick, welcome to the program. Cons Consolo, sorry. I don't know. You have, three, you have three names. I don't know how to handle that. Rad chick. That shit, indeed. Welcome to the program. Uh, I'm sorry I took up uh, the majority of your first half there. Um, but, you know, I, and I'll, I'll touch on that real quickly. I, I know you've been deep in uh, investigating what's going on uh, on the environmental side of uh, things. But, uh, I mean, your thoughts. I mean, I know you you were a supporter of Ron Paul, or at least uh, some of the things that he would come out and talk about. Has this affected you at all, or have you been too busy? You know, I've been too busy. I just found out about all of this today, and I want to say I appreciate your rants, and I know everyone in your chat room does too, and I hope that a lot of people from my page turned out to listen to you tonight because they need to hear it too. Well, I mean, it is what it is. It, it's uh, yet another uh, – and this is the thing that's <clears> – <throat> somebody said in the chat room last night, that, uh, you know, just admitted uh, you were duped. Okay, fine. I was duped. I really, really uh, thought we had a chance of accomplishing something. And and, and I didn't think it was going to be a nominee nominee of the GOP. Uh, but I, I am fully uh, – look, the, the title of that video that is causing a little bit of controversy is To the Gates of Hell, meaning if Ron Paul, if Rand Paul would have stood up and said, enough, folks, enough. This thing is completely co-opted. It is uh, – it. I mean, we've seen election after election in this primary season be stolen from us. This is it. This is complete corruption. We either take it back now or we lose this republic forever. I think there's millions of people who would have stood up and said, I will follow you to the gates of hell or to the gates of restoring our republic. And I would have been in the front of all of them doing it. But that's not what happened. Capitulation happened. I'm not going off on another rant. So was he at Bilderberg? Was that verified? I don't know if Rand Paul was. I've, I've heard stories that he was, and I've heard stories he wasn't. I've heard stories that Romney was there. Um, it, it's pretty telling that this all occurs directly after that, and, and we have. Look, and, and here's the other thing is there's a lot of people who think that, that uh, Rand is going to end up uh, on the ticket, and that ain't going to happen. That ain't just ain't going to happen. I mean, there's still – there's still uh, not enough people that were in this movement to sway an election for Mitt Romney. We will end up with a status quo uh, GOP uh, hand-picked uh, candidate to run as VP. Maybe Rubio, maybe uh, maybe somebody else. But the fact is, they don't. They, all they needed to have happen was what they had happen. Rand come out and say, 
uh, I support Mitt Romney, and then all hell bo- broke loose inside the Paul world. Right on. Okay, let's talk about. I, I want to get into before we run out of uh, the segment here. What we've been looking at many stories coming out of uh, the disaster in uh, Japan, Fukushima. Uh, and you've been coming on here for months talking about us. I want you to touch in the next uh, couple minutes what we're going to talk about on the second half. Uh, but we can't forget, I want to talk about this tuna disaster. I saw that article that they were ten times higher than they were just a couple years ago. Now you're getting reports that it isn't just isolated. It's, uh, you know, all these tuna, uh, all the seas are just being completely uh, devastated uh, on the Pacific side of uh, the ocean. Um, and then also what's going on with, with uh, uh, where we're at, South Bend? Yeah, um, South Bend, Indiana had some uh, extremely high uh, readings last week, which I went to check out. But we have been getting some help now from the mainstream because of these tuna reports. That research actually came from Stanford, and it was um, 15 tuna that they tested. All 15 uh, tested positive for uh, cesium from Fukushima. And then Arnie Gunderson came out this past weekend. He gave a, a lengthy interview coast to coast, and he stated that all of the tuna in the Pacific are going to be positive for this. And so I mean, we're, we're looking at the end of the seafood industry in the Pacific. And, you know, that coupled with what's going on in the Gulf from the core exit and the BP oil tester, I mean, we, we have got some major, major environmental and food chain problems that have to be dealt with. And this has been going on now for over a year. These tuna were actually caught in August of last year. Yeah, 2011, right? This was yeah, this was nine months old. So the the numbers are going to be a lot higher now. And that coming from the Stanford researchers and other new experts that are saying, you know, the way bioaccumulation works and biomagnification in the food chain, this is only going to go up. It's only going to become more of a problem. And we've already had this problem with the stuff raining out over our vegetables. In the you know the, the salad bowl of the U.S. Right. Uh, you know, in, in California, we're seeing you know mutations in produce. Even some of the produce that I'm buying in in Michigan has been mutated. And um, you know, I mean, it's just a terrible problem. And the fact that so many people are still so clueless about it. I mean, in a way, thank goodness these tuna reports came out because it's finally cluing people in to hey, there's something going on here that needs to be dealt with. Yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit more, as well as um, uh, Reactor 4, because you gave us a report on that last time you were on. And then I definitely want to talk about the South Bend deal, what's what's been reported. I mean, there's all kinds of stories coming on. You don't know which one is uh, – I mean, that's actually why you went there. So we'll, we'll talk more about that on the backside of this break. We're going to try to dispel some of the stories that have been coming out uh, in alternative media over what's going on in Indiana. All right, we're going to be back with The Rad Chick and more Wide Awake News Radio in five and a half minutes. Hang tight, guys. All right, guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. I'm your host, Charlie McGrath. It's still the 12th day of June, Tuesday. Christina Consolo is our, Consolo, sorry, is our, Rad Chick is our guest uh, for this entire hour, even though I burnt up most of her time for the for the first hour. And we were talking a little bit during the break there about, isn't it ironic that, or is it ironic that uh, we have these disasters happening globally? And, I mean, you know, you can think back to the 188-day prediction on earthquakes where we seem to have this 7.0 magnitude deal. You can think back to Chile, uh, that mega, mega earthquake, Fukushima, Gulf uh, Coast, uh, you know, corrects it everywhere inside the Gulf Coast, uh, poison being pumped into the uh, the Pacific Ocean by Fukushima. And all this stuff is kind of just brushed under and brushed over. You know, I'm holding a half a dozen stories here about um, what's being lined up for us next on the geopolitical front with, uh, you know, uh, the with NATO coming out talking about staged events and taking over uh, communications and media inside of Syria so they can uh, pave the way for this new color revolution in the Syrian spring or whatever we're going to call it. Uh, you have stories being let out about... Uh, Russia supplying attack helicopters to Syria, and so we're we're beating the drums of war on one front. We have natural disasters, man-made disasters rather, that are being uh, uh, set by the wayside. On the other hand, and it seems like the the power elite. This is real conspiratorial stuff. Now, it seems like the power elite they don't they don't really care. They don't really care if this stuff comes to light. And and is it because 
they know that time is short. Now, I had this discussion earlier today with Warren, and his timetable puts it out to, you know, 2015 or so before we have this big dirt nap collapse, maybe even 2020 before we have some kind of global uh, military event. And and I've got to think that that isn't the case because, you know, we see everything ramping up. We see things getting worse, and it just seems like as the uh, uh, the acceleration of events occurs, that it cannot possibly last to that kind of time frame. Christina, how long, I mean, how long, how many years conceivably can we go with polluting the Pacific Ocean before it becomes a real humanitarian nightmare that is going to be impossible uh, to uh, brush under the carpet, Mm -hmm. so to say? Yeah, well, that's coming quickly. Um, And looking at things, too, like, you know, listening to your show and just from the the economy perspective of it, like, they're just letting everything go. And and the things that they do address, there's no sense of urgency to fix anything. Right. And and with the radiation situation, um, you know, I, I... once I really got a handle on how bad the problem was, I thought, you know, it, is something else coming that will make the radiation not matter? And that's why it's not being talked about because I do, they can't get away with this for much longer with the kind of reports that are going to be coming out about contamination and other food sources. And we're doing, we're trying to do everything that we can to wake people up as fast as possible um, because there's a lot of little kids that could be really hurt by this. And, you know, pregnant women that don't have any type of recommendations for, for mitigating and avoiding rain and filtering water. And, I mean, it's just it's just beyond comprehension. And that's why so many of us are just so, you know, frustrated. Right. And, and we have other people we've had on our show that are now going out and they're doing other radio shows, too, to try to get the word out. And it's just like, you know, we're just trying everything that we, we can, but I, I don't understand how they think they're going to get away with this. And that's just from the perspective of the radiation from Fukushima. Well, that, and that, that leads to believe, leads one to believe that, you know, it, you don't need to get away with it. You just need to have something else more terrifying in the wings that's coming. Mm-hmm. You know, you need, to, you need to understand that there's going to be something worse coming where all of a sudden we don't really care about what's happening uh, with polluting the oceans or, you know, in the case of Fukushima or the Gulf Coast uh, or these uh, earthquakes or things like that, because we're, we're, we know that there's something on the horizon that is much, much uh, going to be much, much more in the spotlight, in the headline. And, you know, you look around the world and it, and it isn't a big stretch to say it could be, you know, a complete uh, total collapse financially of uh, the monetary system of the world, uh, the uh, economies of the world. And, and, and you look just a little bit further than that, and you could say that very conceivably, you know, uh, propaganda from the New York Times talking about Russia trying to arm Assad to the hilt so he can fly helicopters around killing people. Uh, you know, you, you're starting to not only go after small countries like Syria that we're not apologists for, but again, it, what business of ours, what happens there. But you're going after countries such as Russia and, and naming them as part and parcel of being uh, in the axis of evil terror uh, circuit. So you, you can see this escalating very, very rapidly into some kind of uh, massive event that suddenly makes Fukushima, radiation, poison tuna, poison shrimp uh, to seem to be not such a big deal because the, the distraction of uh, the crisis of reality will certainly outweigh uh, any of these other things. It doesn't make it any less deadly or any less dangerous or any less uh, disgusting that we're not, uh, you know, given the truth, especially since we're spending all these millions of U.S. taxpayer dollars in order to uh, monitor these kind of things, no truth is getting out about it. And, and when we do hear uh, evidence of what's going on, it is almost consistently uh, only from the alternative media. Uh, so I thank you for what you're doing out there. And, and to that you note, know, let's talk, because you've always come on here talking about the continuing spewing of uh, radiation into the air, and how we have spikes uh, across the coast, east coast, west coast. Uh, what are we looking at now? Have you been uh, doing any recent surveys? Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, in touch with some people on, on Facebook that are running uh, pages where th- that's all they talk about. There's a couple crowdsourced sites. Uh, one of them had reported this uh, 7,000 CPM South Bend last week, which they now what uh, is that? How, how dangerous is that? Yes. How, how dangerous well, is 7,000 CPMs? Um, 
you wouldn't want to be in that high of a radiation zone for more than a week or so. Um, a normal more, normal range for that area of the country is about 20 to 25, and this was 7,000. I mean, it's it, my immediate thought was it's a new plant. It's a new plant. It's having some kind of problem or fire. Um, you know, it's an, a local event or uh, something military, maybe a military test. I mean, I, I highly doubt that if it was a real uh, measurement that was recorded, and there is some evidence to point to that it might have been uh, a, an actual reading, um, that it would have been a local event and not something that would have made its way all the way over from Japan at that high of a level. It would have been picked, it would have been set enough detectors all well, the what, way what was to the, Indiana. What was the rumor sphere? You know, what was what was all the different stories coming out about what it could have been? Well, that the following day, um, Davis Bathy, a uh, plant in Ohio, um, reported that they had a, a leak in a, a coolant pipe that was leaking radioactive water, but it was contained within the building um, due to the air currents. It couldn't have been from that. Then another plant, Fermi, um, there was possibly a problem at that plant, although I couldn't find anything about it on the NRC event notification today, um, but also because of the wind currents, it, it would have been more likely something from Palisades or something from northern Michigan. And then there was a really crazy report, one of these like Russian Federation type stories, that um, there was a, a gathering of militia people. You know, Michigan has a lot of militia groups, especially up north. But there was a gathering and um, the military actually bombed them and killed close to 400 people, and that this was fallout from this event. So, I mean, there's all kinds of stories that are going on what? about this. And, well, this is the weird thing, though. The day after these readings that they claimed were erroneous, there were military helicopters and unmarked helicopters that were flying in um, formation over South Bend, and that was the same way that they measured air levels in Tokyo. Um, by sending these out and, and having them uh, spaced so far apart so they could be testing the air. This was going on down there, and we did see helicopters when we were down there as well. Um, there were flashes of light that were being reported in the sky, loud right. loud booms. Even one guy up um, in northern Michigan had trees that were broken from one of these sounds, and we actually heard it on Sunday afternoon. We went to Lake Michigan and hung out at the beach and just checked readings all day. Um, took pictures of some of the plants there and things like that, and we heard this loud rumbling in the sky, and there were no storms around. Um, the ground didn't shake or anything like that. I, I really don't know what that was, and there wasn't anything that showed up on the seismic uh, recorder either when we got back, but there was definite um, uh, indications that they've been receiving fallout from Fukushima because a lot of the plants in the area are gigantic. There's mutations even in spider warts, and spider warts are a type of plant that's called nature's Geiger counter. Yeah. It changes color around ionizing radiation or an ambient ionizing radiation. Um, and not only had these plants changed color, but they were mutated. So um, we took loads of pictures and, and you know, Lots of readings drove back and forth. What were the readings? And the readings were, were the same kind of spikes in the air that I get in the Detroit area a few times a day. It, it was um, nothing out of the ordinary except for post Fukushima spikes. Um, so, you know, we didn't see any indication that there was any kind of fallout. And we checked, you know, drains around sewers, and and we didn't have any rain while we were there. Perhaps if it had rained, it would have brought some of that down to the ground again, and we might have picked it up if it was still around. But um, I I did not see any evidence that there was anything weird going on as far as that goes. But the flashes and the helicopters and the rumbling was definitely strange, and I, I don't have any explanation for that. That That is weird. I'm reading some of the, the stuff in chat right now. Uh, a known disinfo type said it was an attack by the U.S. military on a local militia where 300 were killed. Yeah, junk. You know, that, that I don't think would be uh, certainly anything that, uh, you know, if Christine was there, you're not going to hide that. I mean, you're not going to eradicate that many people without uh, more than just a, a few people putting uh, stories out on the Internet about it. It is weird. I mean, I could certainly see some kind of an accident where, uh, you know, they had the military uh, helicopters out there uh, trying to 
get a handle on what kind of uh, damage was done, especially if you say they were flying in patterns just like they did in uh, Fukushima. But was this? you never personally saw any of these high, high 7,000 count uh, readings. No, not in person. I didn't. No. So, what was your what was your overall uh, opinion of the situation? Because it was pretty hot on the internet there for a minute. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I I know there is a um, uh, I believe it's Mano Air Force Base uh -huh. that is in the area. You know, I mean, they could have been testing something. The government hit, did three plutonium tests in 2011, and they didn't tell anyone until after they did them in. Uh, in the New Mexico area, so I mean, it could have been something like that that might come out later if there was any kind of like um, uh, mass event, like this uh, this info agent. I mean, it'd be extremely difficult to cover something like that up. Absolutely. And and so I, I highly doubt that, but um, I, we didn't see any like increased police presence or hazmat or anything like that either. And if if those readings were accurate, I would have thought they would still be around that area and continually checking. Right. Well, and, and yeah, so I agree with that. And if it would have been, you know, I mean, the, the guy I was thinking of when they're, when I'm reading this story about this, uh, you know, these people killed, they, they were in a militia and the guy who was on before us, if that occurred, I guarantee you, uh, lovely would uh, be talking about it. And, and, uh, it would be, it would be super, uh, viral news that, uh, would be impossible to hide. So that just seems, but as Smart Scarecrow in the chat is saying right now, sometimes these disinfo stories are put out there so they can, you know, cover up uh, some kind of other thing, maybe a government deal gone bad, gone wrong, uh, but uh, very suspicious without a doubt. Uh, but I'm glad you were there because you're kind of dispelling some of these, uh, some of the rumor mill. Well, a lot of people were worried about it. I was getting, you know, emailed like crazy. Um, people put family in the area, and they didn't know what to do. And said, so, you know, I'm really not that far from that area. So we decided just to take a ride out and just hang out there all weekend and, and see what was up. So you saw the big and, booms? You saw, did you, you see know, the flashes? We saw the flashes. And, and yeah, the, the rumbling in the sky was very strange. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting uh, uh, asked over and over again to ask you about boron, and, and I will before we go. But um, uh, thank you for going up there and doing that, because basically, if it would have been uh, you know as severe as some people were letting on, you really just put yourself in harm's way. Uh, or did you have protection? Did you have your spacesuit? I had my spacesuit. All right. Well, never mind. Wasn't that brave of you then? Now that I think about it. Of course, I'm just kidding. All right, let's get into mitigation a little bit. Give us the tips. Every time you're on here, you, you have to uh, give us the tips on what we need to do. Here we are. We're getting into, uh, we're close to being a summer solstice. What do we need to watch out for? What do we need to do to protect our pets, our kids, uh, ourselves? As you know, I have asthma, and it has been worse over the last year uh, than, uh, than it's been early in my life. It could be just because I'm getting old, but then again, it could be for other reasons. So what do we need to do? on a daily basis to uh, mitigate our exposure to a potential radiation fallout from uh, uh, Fukushima and or contamination, radiation, cont radioactive contamination to our seafood or, uh, or any other contact we may come in with it. Well, in terms of it being summer, too, we worry about people exercising outside, and as much um, as you can do indoors if you do it on a regular basis is probably a better idea because you take in more air that way. Um, and, you know, and I have people asking, too, can my kids go in the pool and the kiddie pool and things like that, and um, and what some of our uh, people on our page are doing that, that have little kids that use kiddie pools is they're just putting baking soda in the water. It's a natural um, decontaminant. And um, or doing that after your kids go swimming, um, you know, wearing goggles when they go in the pool or if they go in a lake, and then just making sure that they shower afterward or if they're spending a lot of time outside that they take a shower. And if you have any concern if they get wet from the rain, to just mix a little baking soda in with their soap or put in their bath. Uh -huh. And that's what the military uses to decontaminate. Um, you know, drinking water and ice, like if you're making ice, you want to use filtered water, too. Don't use tap water for a mul multitude of reasons, um, one being radiation. But there's, you know, quite a bit of evidence now, too, that we're getting a lot of groundwater contamination from core exit that's raining down on us and fracking. 
that it's destroying some of our groundwater supplies. And Loren Murray, who is a, a, a very vocal researcher about a lot of these topics, is going to be coming out with some information about that shortly. Um, she just also released some data about athletes and racehorses. There's an increase in them dying of heart attacks since Fukushima. And that's because of the sodium that they're inhaling that's getting into their bloodstream and their heart. It uh, causes uh, heart attacks. Sure. So that's a concern as well. And um, okay, well, the- we listen, listen to the fallout forecast that I do and avoid not only the jet stream and rain, but there's something called the tropopause. And that's how we kind of determine where the fallout is going to occur. And then when we kind of trace it back from these crowdsourced readings and see if we're right. And it's usually pretty easy to predict. predict and I wish everybody would learn how to do that because you can find a lot of these resources online. We have all of them on Fukushima Facts where you that's can it. go and look at all the weather links, all the radiation monitors, mitigation videos. I mean, everything is on that page. And there's um, also links to earthquake Pages and sun and sky tools. Um, FukushimaFacts.com. So, FukushimaFacts.com. And is that where your program is being broadcast from twice a month? Um, no, it's on Orion Talk Radio. Oh, okay. And how do we hear that? And when do we hear it? It's on Tuesdays and Thursdays from noon to 1 Eastern Standard Time. And, um, yeah, we're, we're really enjoying doing the show, and we've had a really good response from people. And, of course, it helps when these stories do hit the mainstream and people come across our page. Our numbers went up just in the last week. We, we, we reached 42,000 people just with one Facebook page, and I have, like, 12 of them. Wow. And that was, and on, that was on the heels of the tuna news? Yeah, yeah, that was after the tuna news and also because of the tsunami debris that's been washing up, which the researchers are saying, Arnie Gunderson as well, that it most likely some of it is going to be radioactive. And, you know, they're asking for volunteers in these areas to pick it up, and they're not being given any kind of um, protective anything or hazmat training. And, you know, you saw what happened with the 9-11 responders, people that went to that cleanup weren't given adequate protection either. Right. And a lot of them ended up really sick. So um, Absolutely. Hey, before we run out of time, that, that question kept coming in there about bulk boron. I, I I have no idea how to even segue that question to you. Tell me about okay. bulk boron. If you go on Facebook, um, we have a page called Farming and Fallout. There's information about where you can order boron on there. What am I using and boron for? Boron is to decontaminate your garden before you harvest it. And um, that's also good for people who are growing uh, cannabis for medical marijuana patients. If they're growing it outside, they have to decontaminate the plants before they harvest them. And um, baking soda can be used, too, to wash vegetables and fruit before you eat it. Christina, thank you. Christina Consalo, also known as the Rad Chick. Real quick again, how do I hear your program? What nights and what time? Tuesdays and Thursdays, noon to one, Eastern Standard Time.